the Lord be with you. This Easter, we start our celebration the way it would have been for the people that experienced the first Easter. We go to the tomb expecting only death, only the suffering and uncertainty that we see so much in our world today. But as we will see, Jesus rose from the dead to change all that. Join us now for our worship. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So Joseph came and took away Jesus' body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus, and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we walk in spirit with those who went to the tomb early Easter morning. And we, and we walk, walk with, with all, all the mourners everywhere who have suffered and who are still suffering. Color the world this morning dark and gray and sad. For if Christ has not been raised, our faith is futile, and we are still in our sins. Our words of confession would bounce back to accuse us. Our sins of thought and word and deed would stamp us guilty. We would continue to exist in the death called sin. The sealed tomb seals our faith. Then even God himself cannot rescue us from what we are. The world would go on toward death, sealed with the curse of the fall, with pain and suffering and cruelty and meaningless life and death for all. If Christ had not been raised, then those who die have perished forever. The grave would have won, for if one like Christ cannot conquer, how can we? So we come to the tomb this morning with only one thing in mind, to better prepare his body for the sleep of death, and preparing ourselves for the same sorry sleep. For if Christ has not been raised, we are the most pitiful of people. But who will roll away the stone? Pilate's stone, stone of death, death the stone, stone of sin that, that blocks the way to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. 
Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took a hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. seek the living among the dead because, because we, we have, have nowhere else to go he had told us that he is the way the truth and the life people of god why do you seek the living among the dead because, because we, we live in a world that still suffers from wars and hunger, and hunger cruelty and bloodshed because, because families are torn apart by greed or death or selfishness because individual lives deny or ignore or mock God. People of God, approach the tomb. Await the dawn of a new age. Seek the miracle of new life. People of God, why do you seek the living among the dead? Because we remember his words of resurrection and life and hope and victory. People of God, do not live in death. Do not let sin be your master. Jesus Christ has risen to forgive you. He has risen to save you. He has risen to give you life. People of God, he is not here. He is risen. Yes, yes the, tomb the tomb is, is empty. empty. He, he is, is risen. risen. He is risen. And, and he, he is, is among, among us. Alleluia. Alleluia. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Oh, uh -huh. 
And also, also with, with you. O oh God, for our redemption, you have given your only Son, Jesus, to the death on the cross. And by his glorious resurrection, you have delivered us from the power of death. Grant that our sin may be drowned each day by our baptisms through daily repentance, and that a new person may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from afar. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I've continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall adorn yourself with tambourines, and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Arise and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.
The basis for this morning's message is the Easter account from Matthew's Gospel read earlier. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. As we continue to watch and wait and try to cope with all the changes brought on by the coronavirus and our responses to it, we're dealing, too, with another epidemic, an epidemic of fear. The physical distancing is making it harder on people's mental health as loneliness and depression increase. The constant fear of the unknown increases anxiety, worries about how to cope with job losses or pay reductions are on the rise, too. One of the healthiest ways to deal with all that we're going through, though, is to live with that idea of both and. The idea that two things can be true at the same time, even if they seemingly contradict each other. We can be both glad of the extended time we're able to have with families, even if we're sad about the reason why it happened. We can be glad that the Cubs are undefeated, even if the reason is that they haven't played any games that count. But now, as Lutherans, we're used to dealing with that concept of both and and paradoxes like that. We're both saints and sinners. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper, it's both bread and body, wine and blood. God's Word speaks to us in both law and gospel. We see God at work in both the kingdom of the left, the government, and the kingdom of the right, the church. As Martin Luther wrote, a Christian is a perfect, perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none, and a Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. That both and is where the women who go to Jesus' tomb that first Easter morning find themselves. Although they don't start that way, they start not with any joy in them, but only with fear and sadness. Fear has always been a part of the Easter story, even if we don't always think of it that way. The disciples were afraid, hiding in the upper room, fearing what had happened to Jesus could happen to them too. Jesus had been crucified because, among other reasons, the Pharisees feared the popularity of Jesus, and Pontius Pilate feared the unrest that could occur. Fear was all around. The women were afraid when they went to the tomb and discovered it was empty and saw the angel sitting on the stone. Fear is the reflexive human response to an encounter with the supernatural, after all. There's a reason that the first words out of almost every angel's mouth are the words, fear not. And so when the women came to the tomb that first Easter morning, they were not expecting a resurrection. They were expecting what they were familiar with, death. They were expecting to go to the tomb and prepare Jesus' body as they would have had there been time after he died. They were expecting to continue to walk in their grief, to mourn their friend and teacher. They were expecting to continue to mourn the future they had been expecting, the future Jesus had promised. When Jesus died, it was almost as if they had lost their own lives as well. Even though Jesus had told them what was going to happen, seeing the angel and seeing the stone rolled away was out of their normal experiences and filled them with fear. But when Jesus meets them outside the tomb and shows them that he is alive after they, the angel points out all that they've seen, their fear is overpowered by joy. Their lives are changed, but for the better. Instead of lives changed by death, they now live lives changed by resurrection. Jesus' resurrection has given them new life. But that's not the end of the story. The new life that the women have isn't just for themselves. They're to go and tell the disciples what they've seen. And when the women left to go tell the disciples, they didn't just leave in fear. They left in fear and great joy. They knew that despite the unknown, nothing would ever be the same. They knew that Jesus had defeated death, and they no longer needed to fear death. And so as they went in fear and joy, they knew that their lives would never be the same. But they don't know for sure how their lives would be changed. And neither did the disciples who heard their message. The world had changed for the women in ways they never thought possible after they saw the empty tomb 
and their world would never be the same. It's kind of like how when we watch older movies that depict New York City and we see the twin towers rising in the skyline, yet we know the current skyline looks dramatically different. It's how we can look up at the moon and marvel that men walked on the moon once and will hopefully do so again. It's like how already we watch shows or movies that depict large crowds or people confined together and worry that we'll never have that again and mourn the fact that we cannot do that right now. But we too, even though we live in fear, can live in great joy. We know that we no longer need to fear death because Jesus has defeated death. We know that the world was changed forever that first Easter morning. We know that Easter shows what Jesus has done for us. So how can fear and joy go together? Well, we see fear and joy together in big life-changing events in our lives. Approaching a wedding may bring fear that something could go wrong, but there's great joy at the celebration and the beginning of the marriage. There may be joy at a graduation, but fear of the unknown that comes next. There may be joy as you bring a child home from the hospital, but fear about if you can handle all the new responsibilities. There may be joy in retirement, but fear about finding purpose. We may be afraid of what the future will hold. We may fear what will happen if we get sick or our medical system gets overwhelmed, but we also have great joy because of what we celebrate today, the resurrection of Jesus that shows us that death has been defeated and that death does not have the final word no matter how it comes. It's the same message that empowered Christians to stand up to tyrants and be martyred and that led them to care for those suffering in previous pandemics, not fearing for their own lives. We may now fear crowds or even just being near each other because of the virus, but we have great joy in the ways that we're able to keep in touch with each other, look hopefully to the future when we won't need so much physical distancing. Because this isn't the kind of Easter we're used to having. We're used to having a full sanctuary. We're used to having lilies up on the altar. We're used to having brass playing behind us and a full choir singing. This isn't the way we're used to celebrating. Yet it might be the most authentic, most realistic Easter we've ever experienced. Like the disciples and the women were huddled in our homes in fear of what's outside. But like them, we also have joy because we know how the story ends. We know that Jesus is risen, that death has been defeated. We know that the empty tomb that shows us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. We can live in fear and joy. And so we can say, Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Christ who once was slain, now first is free, day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 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 but now has Christ arisen. It's joyful Easter time. Holy Triune God, on this day of resurrection, we praise your name for the sudden surprise of life from death. For the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This, this is, is the, the Lord's, Lord's doing. doing. It, it is marvelous in our eyes. This, this is the day the Lord has made. made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On this happy day of resurrection, Give us the hope of sin conquered through the cross of Christ and teach us to say, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. On this glorious day of new life bestowed, Give us the hope of salvation and teach us to say, Since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we wake or sleep, we might live with him. On this wondrous day of death conquered through an open, empty tomb, give us the hope of triumph over death and teach us to say, 
but we would not have you ignorant, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. On this blessed day of victory over Satan's powers, give us the hope of eternal life and teach us to say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. When trials and suffering rob us of joy and lead us toward hopelessness, give us Easter hope so we may rejoice, rejoice in our sufferings, knowing, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts. When we begin to lose our zeal for you, and our spirits grow weary in serving, give us Easter hope that we may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe, according to the working of his great might, which he accomplished in Christ when he raised him from the dead. In this uncertain time, we ask that you fill us with the sure hope of the resurrection, trusting that because Jesus rose on Easter, we too will rise on the last day and that nothing can separate us from you. Help us to live in this time of fear, nevertheless having the joy that you've given us by Easter. Bless those who are working to stop the spread of the virus and those who are giving care to the ill. Protect us from the disease and bring comfort to those affected by it. Be with those affected by the hardships caused by the pandemic, those who have lost jobs, businesses that have shut down. Give a spirit of generosity to those who have to help those in need. We pray for those who share your Easter victory with people in other lands. Our missionaries, Eric Stinnett in Ethiopia, Benjamin Helge in the Czech Republic, and Cindy Pine in the Dominican Republic, who celebrate birthdays this week. We pray for our friend Kibeta and his family in Ethiopia, and especially for his daughter Mariam, who is a doctor. For the Lutzes in Papua New Guinea, the Grokis in Botswana, the Klausings in Kenya, and Amanda Groshek in Hungary. Make us thankful for all your gifts to us, even in the little things in life, like the sight of daffodils and magnolias in full bloom, and plenty of daylight after supper. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the conqueror, the victor, the giver of life, for you have conquered sin and death. We, we give, give you our thanks and praise and thanksgiving. Praise and thanksgiving. Lord. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for going to the cross with our sins and rising to free us from evil. Protect us from all that threatens us, especially which would try to separate us from you. Help us to live out in our daily lives the new life you gave us by rising from the dead. We pray this in your most precious name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.